what's going on guys? Chris Ramsey here, welcome back. Hope everyone's having a good Monday, cause today is Tutorial Monday. Still not sure about that title. I think for as long as this channel is going to live, this Tutorial Monday will never have a name. But that doesn't matter, that's not why we're here. We're here to learn some magic and I'm going to show you a really cool impromptu card trick. By impromptu, I mean that there's no setup. You can do this on the fly with a borrowed deck. It's very magical, it's very cool. It does require a little bit of sleight of hand but not nothing too intense. And it gets great reaction. You can set this up to perform for children, which, which I perform if I see a kid that wants to see a magic trick or something, this is like my go-to. But I've also performed it for adults with a little bit, little tweak here and there. It is the jumping signature card trick. Let's actually roll a little clip of the performance that I did last week at my meetup to a little boy. After that, I'll get into explaining how this trick works. Is this yours? I know it is. Can I show you a magic trick? Did you see one? Do you think you could uh, draw something on that card? Just draw anything. Draw something that makes it uh, that makes it your card. There we go. So now we know that that's your card, right? Because it has a heart on it. Any other card has that, right? Okay. So we're gonna leave that card somewhere in the middle of the deck. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to draw on the back of. We got the Jack of Diamonds. I'm gonna draw on the back of the Jack of Diamonds. What's your favorite superhero? What's your favorite superhero? Superman? This is gonna be the worst drawing of Superman you've ever seen, okay? Oh, that's not bad, right? There's his cape. He's got just long, weird, freakish arms, but he's cool. Superman's gonna to try to find your card, all right? Here's how it works. Now, that's not your card, is it? It's not, right? So watch what we're gonna do, watch. Superman jumped over here to this card. I think this is your card. Is that your card? This is not your card? Okay, watch, watch. I think now he's found it. This has to be your card. This has to be it. Is that your card? Really? Oh yeah, yours had a heart on it, right? You drew a heart on it. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, can you hold Superman? So I'm gonna take him off this card. Can you hold him? Don't drop him. Don't squeeze too tight. When I say go, you're gonna throw him into here and he's gonna try and find your card. Go ahead, throw him. Oh, you see him go in? Did you see him? Watch. Where is he? Where is he? Where, where are you? Oh, there he is. You threw him right in there. And he landed right on your card. Oh, isn't that cool? How'd you do that? All right, so there you have it. So in this uh, particular instance, I used Superman, which was really cool. I asked him what his favorite superhero was and I drew it. This card trick is really cool because it does adapt to anything. You can draw anything, they can draw anything, and you can make your story or your subject or the justification for all this, adapt that to the drawing that you need. So in other words, you can use your favorite superhero, you can use a little stick man magician that finds the card, or if you're performing uh, for adults, uh, you can just simply use uh, your signature and their signature or a funny word or a funny drawing of yourself. You know, ask them to draw you how they picture you. You know, there's a lot of funny things you can do here with this trick uh, that allow you to make a better performance. So not just about the slights and the moves and stuff, but it really gives you the space to create a nice little performance piece for your audience. So whatever suits your needs. A lot of the times I just go with what I'm feeling, my sense of humor when I'm on the fly, but whatever. Let's get into how this trick works right now. All right, so for this tutorial, we'll be using the Visa playing cards by Alex Pandre and Patrick Kuhn. Alex was uh, nice enough to send me a bunch of these. He sent me red, blue, and the limited gold edition. I believe these are available on his site. I'll leave the link below. They got a little bit of a gold metallic ink here, and the faces are pretty standard. There's some of the faces, and there you have the Joker. So Visa playing card, this was a Kickstarter project. I do like the way they feel. They feel really nice. They feel uh, like a good stock, a good quality. So that's what we're gonna be using today. All right, so first off, what you wanna do is have the spectator choose a card. In the video, I had him choose a random card, which might not have been the best idea because the face card, you know, doesn't leave much room to draw. So what I like to normally do is just to show them the cards and to choose a card that doesn't have much ink on it that they can draw a drawing. Now again, this, whether it's for children or whether it's for adults, it's up to you. So let's say the two of diamonds. I could, I could use the two hearts, but I want to use the two of diamonds. So let's say the two of diamonds leaves a lot of room for them to draw something. So what you're going to have them do is, uh, is draw something here and it could be something that represents them, but it could also be just, uh, their name or a word or something that they know that would be super personal to them that no one else would uh, replicate. In this case, I'm just going to draw there. 
I'm not sure if he's happy or not. This is what we're going with. That is the person's drawing right there. What you want to do with this card, I'm sorry about the focus here. This is really bad. What you want to do about this card is you want to lose it into the deck and then control it to the top, right? So what I did in the video was simple. I, I lost it in the middle. And then, uh, and then I just passed it to the top. Uh, you can use a classic pass if you like, if you're comfortable with it. If not, an easy way is just to cut it into the middle. Let's say it's here. And uh, you're gonna dribble the cards or just lay them down back here, shuck it forward, and it gives you that break here. So within this break is where you're going to put your thumb, and that gives you a nice big thumb break just like that. And you're going to do a double undercut, which is grab the bottom pack, put it on top, grab the other bottom pack, put it on top. All the while just saying you're gonna mix up the deck a little bit. Any method you wanna use to control it to the top is fine. You can also simply just take the card and uh, false shuffle it. I don't know why these cards flip around. False shuffle it and uh, the card stays on top the entire time. Once the card is on top, you will need to execute a double lift. A double lift is lifting two cards uh, to make it look like one. There are many different variations of the double lift. One thing that I find very uh, easy is the strike double lift. You're going to use your index finger and you're going to strike basically, bevel the cards out just a bit like this. So they're not in, but they're beveled like this. And your index is going to come here and you're going to feel two cards, okay? It's gonna take some practice. So you push out a bit, your index comes here, pushes back and then you turn the cards as one. I'm ha I have these points here, which bubbles the card, which makes it easier uh, for me to grab. So again, many double lifts you can use. You can use a push off, which looks like this. Looks like basically you're just pushing off uh, one card, but you're actually pushing off two. That will take some practice. It's taken me months and months, if not years, to get it to the point where I'm satisfied with it. Uh, but if you want something more surefire, again, you can use this method. So just bevel out the cards, index comes here and strikes here, and you'll feel the difference between one and two cards. So if you just practice, you know, sometimes you may get three or four, but you'll feel with practice how many one is and how many two is. And I know it sounds simple, but when you do it, you'll understand. I've got two now. I'm going to grab this, all right, keeping pressure here and at the base of my thumb, not to uh, split the cards. I'm going to just turn it over, holding it here with the thumb, the thumb here, the index and the middle finger, and I can bubble it out using my middle finger. And that's that's something really, really uh, useful because if I were to just drop it on the deck, I would have to execute another double lift to turn it over, and that makes it super fishy. So instead, dropping it there, holding it like this, all right, so I can bevel it, and now it's easy for me to just grab and just turn over again. So, once the double lift is done, you're gonna say, I'm gonna take this card, I'm gonna take the top card, which is the six of uh, the six of spades, and I'm gonna draw something on the back of it. Now, you can show that to them front and back a few times, one time is enough, and you're gonna draw something on the back. Now, if you're performing for children, a really good thing to do is just draw a little stick man that represents a magician. He'll have a head, two eyes, he'll have a top hat, right, a generic, or maybe a fedora, and uh, his legs, he's got his magic wand, maybe a little cape. You know, you can say, who's your favorite actor and I'll try to draw him. Your favorite Olympian, I don't know. Whatever you want to use is fine, as long as it's like a person, because this quote unquote person is going to find their card, right? So once that's done, this is a little, little bit of a card steal, pretty easy to do. Now I'm holding two cards, I have their selection on top, right, but they think that that's the six of spades. So what you're gonna want to do, is this little steal here where I steal out the card and then it jumps from card to card, okay? I'm gonna run you through that one more time. So once you're in this position, you wanna grab the card here. This hand holding the deck is going to go like this and is going to act as cover. And it all happens in one action. As you turn your hand over, your fingers here will grip that card and pull back as you're here. This is here, this is going to turn inwards and your fingers in the back are going to grab that card as the index and thumb just kind of pulls back, right? So now you've stolen the card, but they think it's still on this card. And this is where that little move happens. You're going to just do this. Hold it between your middle finger and your index, your thumb springs it. I like to make a little sound for kids, kind of like whatever you want. You're gonna go 
looks like it jumped over. Now this card, you can show them again. You can put that back in the middle. Now at this point, you can do that one more time if it's for kids, if it's for adults. Um, you can just skip through to the next part. You're going to do a double lift. So you do your double lift. That's your card. They say, no, you say, of course it isn't. You drew on your card. Hmm. All right, here's what we're gonna do. You turn it back face down on top of the deck. Now you're going to execute an Erdene's color change. This is uh, found in Expert at the Card Table. Probably the uh, the most basic color change. And uh, in the, uh, I like this color change for this routine because it looks like you're grabbing something off the card. It kind of justifies that. You're gonna push the card forward and this part of your hand is going to contact the deck and pull back. Pulling out one card, this index finger is going to square up as you come over and pretend to grab it. Now there are many variations of the Ordinaire's color change. A lot of people at first are like, well, I grabbed two or three cards or four cards or no cards. Like my hand's not sticky enough. What do I do? All right, so one thing you can do is just to blow on your palm here. So, and you say like, oh, I'm gonna make the magic happen, whatever. You can do that, right? But now you've got a little bit of a, a sweaty palm, uh, but you don't need to do that. I think the more you do it, the more sort of you're used to the feel of the cards. In the action of, of putting my hand down, that's like this part of my hand is gonna kick that card out forward, but without them seeing it. So I'm here and it's already kicked out, right? So I'm here, I turn, boom, and I push. Now I cover everything up. This part is going to just pull that card back. And as soon as I'm cleared, be careful, don't make that click sound. As soon as I'm cleared, the index is going to push that card back on the deck. And this card is going to lay on top and I'm going to pretend that I'm holding something. So in full speed, it kind of looks like this. You give them that superhero or actor or whatever in their hand, you're gonna ask them in a second to throw it in the deck. But now the card is second from the top, you want it somewhere around the middle. So easy, you can just swing cut it, bring it to the middle. I'm gonna ask you to throw them somewhere in the middle. And then when they do that, so you go one, two, three, catch it. Now as you spread through the cards, there should be the magician. There you go, you threw him over here and ta-da, he's found your signature. All right guys, thanks so much for sticking around and thanks for uh, learning that. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you practiced that. It's a pretty simple trick, but it does get great reactions and it's pretty uh, easy to do. You just have to focus on a few slights, nothing, light went out. You just have to focus on a few slights and a little bit of practice, but nothing major. So I wanted to give you guys like a full little routine on this channel because I do teach a lot of slights and a lot of moves and stuff like that. But I wanted to put together this small routine that you can learn and that you can go out and perform yourself. So let me know in the comments below what you would draw on the card. I've drawn this little stick man, but what would you draw? What What is the scenario? What justification and what sort of presentation would you put behind it to fit you? I'm really curious about your ideas. Maybe I'll grab a few. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.